Ron Oatmans with the Self-Aware Leader. So I have a question for you. Do you know of any nice people that you find really hard picturing them getting angry? I mean, like raging, livid. Is that something that you're able to call to mind? Maybe, on the other hand, you know a nice person and you've seen that other side of them, the side that hardly anyone else is able to see, but where they really get angry and it just comes out. And if we want to tell the truth, you might be one of those people. So I'm going to just be totally open here, vulnerable. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those nice people for the broad majority of the public, but I've got a temper and I've got anger. And for a very, very few people, they get to see it come out. And it's not something I'm proud of. It's not something I'm, I'm uh, really want to brag about. It's not at all. In fact, the last thing I wanted to do was to record this segment. But I was thinking, you know, this is an issue that I think a few people might be able to get some help from. And so I'm just going to throw it out there. So I'm wearing my red today. This is because I have, I'm channeling the, the anger energy, which we often associate with red. And on the emotions wheel, we actually code the anger emotion as red as well. And so here's the setup. I'm typically a pretty amiable, nice person. That's the way that I seem to occur to the great majority of people. And, you know, given the option, I would prefer to be agreeable, to be nice, to get along with people as much as I can but I have my limits. I've also got an internal reality, a life of its own, where sometimes outside, you know, I'm smiling or I'm trying to be pleasant, but inside I'm annoyed. I'm irritated. I've, I've got different expressions of anger. And one of the great discoveries I've made in using the emotions wheel is that anger takes different expressions like this. Some of those words that I just used, like annoyance or irritation or, or peeved, perturbed, we can come up with a lot of words. The point is that the degree to which you hold the anger in and don't find a constructive channel for it just makes you that much more vulnerable for the times that it just comes out, erupting out. And especially if it, is only shown to the people closest to you, it's going to do a lot of hurt, a lot of damage to the people around you. Now, that may be in personal relationships. For a few people, it might be at work. And maybe you work for one of those bosses that it's like you've been around them for a while. You know that they have the public persona of a nice person. And yet you've also seen the side where that anger just comes erupting. It just comes out and it pours out. And it's like, whoa, I do not want to be around when that happens. In my own family, we had a joke because my dad is a lot like this. His um, his his attitude, his demeanor is typically pleasant and get along with people. But in our family, we had a joke that whenever my dad had a swarm, like a swarm of bees, watch out. It didn't happen often. But when enough was enough and he had gotten fed up, he'd reach his limit, ooh, it was swift, it came out, and it was over usually pretty quickly as well. But you did not want to be <laughs> on the receiving end of the swarm. And so that was something that I grew up with. Maybe I internalized it to a degree. I haven't explored that in therapy. But I do know this. Some of you nice people over time have found yourselves in positions of leadership and positions of influence. And there is a side of you where you keep it restrained, you keep it inside, you keep it controlled, but your anger has a real power to it that sometimes frightens and even overwhelms you. And so what I want to share in this short segment is one, to acknowledge your anger and to name it. It's even more helpful if you can be specific and give the actual nuance of what you're feeling 
So a feelings wheel is really great for this. And describing your anger in terms of whether you are really like agitated, annoyed, irritated, perturbed, are you raging? So different degrees, different intensities, or just find shadings, but finding the right word to express what your anger is. Research studies have shown this automatically. If you can name it accurately, it helps bring it down. It makes it more manageable. So that's the first tool to grab hold of here is just to be honest and name your anger. Second of all is to channel your anger, to put it into pursuits that are constructive and not destructive. And so maybe you've heard the advice before. And if you haven't, let me be the one to deliver it to you. Physical pursuits are good, especially ones where you're not kicking an animal or a person, obviously, or destroying property. But if you can get out, I've heard people talk about kickboxing, you know, or doing some sort of physical activity that just allows them to get their irritation, their annoyance worked out in some sort of constructive pursuit that is not going to be destructive of you or toward other people or property. Um, but if you got something that you just need to, you know, tear up and it's ready for the junk pile anyway, go at it. I know some people who who will actually go out and, you know, shoot guns, shotguns, you know, and blow up stuff, target practice, whether it's, you know, uh, probably not shooting uh, clay pigeons because you got to have a certain amount of control and accuracy to hit those. But if you just want to open up and unload on something, you know, give a positive or a constructive outlet, a channel for your anger. So those are similar to what we'd call venting. But let me challenge you to take it up a notch even more. So a third thing is finding a constructive outlet for your anger. Often underneath anger is a sense of something is not right. Something's wrong. And if you can put your anger to a positive use, such as constructively dealing with some issue that will make a difference, that will make uh, things better in the world for at least one other person, so much the better. So this is something on the level of what we call righteous anger or a constructive use of anger. And so whether you put that into justice activities or um, advocacy for the people who don't have a voice for, let's say, abused children. You know, there's organizations like CASA in here in the U.S., court-appointed special advocate of helping out these people who just slip through the system and don't have an advocate in their corner, someone who helps them. So being able to take your anger about the way things are and channel it into positive activities that make a difference, make the world better for at least one other person is a third way that nice people can actually deal with our anger and channel it in good ways. So maybe you've been watching this and kind of wondering, what's the story behind this? There's got to be a story. So let me tell you, I'm going to just be open again about this. I was having a conversation with my business partner and um, it got intense. It got personal. And, you know, she said something about, well, you just want, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Don't have to go into the specifics. But that really got under my skin, really made me angry. And I realized that I don't want to be told what I want or don't want or how I'm feeling or how I'm not feeling, especially when it's like so far off from what I'm actually experiencing. And I just responded in anger. And I realized in the moment, whatever I'm reacting to, whatever I'm triggered by in that, I need to put this into some positive or some constructive use. And so this is me implementing step number two, which is taking my anger in that moment and making a video to share with other people, to share with nice people who might have an anger issue under the surface or an anger issue that is very episodic. It's, 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 it seldom comes out, but when it does, it's embarrassing. It can be destructive. It's just not a, it's not a good scenario. And so I wanted to share this with you and with others who might be helped by it. So 
Thanks for tuning in. Ron Oatman's with Lead Skill. We do the Self-Aware Leader podcast, and you can catch that on our YouTube channel, and we would be happy to have you um, tune in and be able to benefit from some of our conversations about how leaders can grow through greater self-awareness. Thanks.